Hi, this is Josh, your EdTech Specialist, or EdTech Spec. And today we're going to talk about labels, not folders, in Gmail and how to get organized with them. So here we are. This is my Gmail inbox. And you can see I've got kind of a lot of stuff going on. Um, you can see I have uh, some labels here to the side and these tabs across the top, we're going to talk about them. And then I, this is my message list. So this is my label list. This is my message list. And you'll notice I have these things across the top, forums, updates, permissions, and social. Your inbox might not look like this, or it might not have all of these, but these are called categories. And what Google does is it organizes things into large groups for you and decides, does this really need to go into the primary inbox? Mm, maybe, maybe not. And the nice thing is it's trainable. So as you move things in and out, for example, if, if um, there was something in updates that I didn't want to be in there anymore, let's say um, there's some uh, accepted thing here. If I drag it from updates into primary, you see I get this message that says, do this for future messages from joshua.harris at lsol.org. So how do I know what I have and how do I know it's going to go in them? Well, if I click on this plus, it gives me a kind of an example from each one. So if I hover over forums, I can see like the examples. It comes from my ISTE communities and my Google for Education Certified Trainers. So that's those are big forums. Those are big discussion groups, and I, I don't necessarily want those. In updates, there's, uh, again, ISTE communities and um, shipping from the UPS and a G Suite update blog. So if you get a lot of share notifications for uh, Google Docs and Drive, this is probably where your share notifications go. They don't go into your primary unless you start dragging them in there and tell them to do it. Promotions tends to be shopping type stuff. Social is things like Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and then primary. And it's showing me the people who go into my primary. Now, this is really uh, my inbox of choice. So um, I'm just going to keep going here. But those categories um, are really good at like filtering out large amounts and um, personal confession. I don't count those as my inbox, although Gmail counts them as my inbox. I just kind of ignore them and go through them occasionally. So let's head over to my primary. Now, I know I'm in primary because this is kind of grayed. There's a color bar here. If I was in social, you see the little blue there. And I know I'm in my inbox because inbox is red. And according to this, I have 14 unread messages. That's what the number in the parentheses mean. So if you are used to Outlook or some other mail uh, systems, you would look over here and say, these are folders. Those are folders. Josh, I understand folders, but they're not folders. They're labels, and they're a bit more flexible than folders. So what can you do? First, what makes them flexible is you can have an email in more than one label at a time, and it will show up in all of them. So let me tell you what I mean. So this is my friend, Kate Tolnai. So I click on Kate's and hers is selected. So look at the top of my screen and see what happens. So I'm going to unselect it. I've only got three things up here. When I select it and I come up to the top, all of a sudden I have these. And if you don't know what these symbols mean, just hover over. I could archive this, report it as spam, throw it in the garbage, uh, move to. I know that looks like a folder. Josh, you said Gmail doesn't have folders. It doesn't. That means move to. And then this is labels. So let's start with labels. Well, what do I know? I know. Kate works for Q. And let's say in this case, I consider Kate a vendor. And let's say I also need to follow up on it. When I hit apply, notice it stays in my inbox. But let's look, those tags from the labels, those show up here. If I open this up, you'll see they're here. And I could use these X's to move them, uh, to, to take those labels off. So I'm going to mark as unread. And let's go back here. So I, with this still selected and it's unread, and I know that it's unread because it's in bold and it's not grayed. These are red. So let's look at the three places I put it. Let's look in queue. This is one of the things I like. If I have it selected in one place, it stays selected even if I move into another label. So here in, I'm in the queue label. I know that because it's red where I have 28 unread emails in queue. And it says it's in my inbox, follow up, and vendors. Notice because I'm in queue, it doesn't show the queue tag here because that would be kind of redundant. If I go to follow up, here's Kate's email. It says inbox. Now Q is showing up and vendors, but follow up isn't showing here because I'm in that one. Now, here's kind of the cool thing about organization. 
So instead of thinking, hmm, where should I put Kate's email? I knew it was Q. I know I need to follow up. And I know that uh, she's a vendor. So I've put it in all th three of those. So I don't have to remember where I put it. I can just think about where will I think to look for it later, okay? So it becomes much more, I al almost always put several labels on an email because it makes it easier to find label later. So if I'm ready to move it out of the inbox, again, still as unread, then I come up to the one that looks like kind of a folder. I click move to, and I'm gonna move that to the Q folder. And you see it says Q has been moved. If I want, I can undo it pops it right back in here, but I'm going to select it again. Let's move it to the Q label and let's see what happens. So is Kate's email there? Yep. Right there. Follow up and vendors. Is it in follow up? Yep. There too. That's what I mean. You don't have to remember where you put things. You don't have to worry about being inconsistent where you put things because Gmail also has amazing search, but also you can put it in several labels at the same time of just where you'll think to look for things. Okay. So let's talk about other ways. I'm going to click this and uh, I want to move this back to the inbox. So I'm just going to drag it. So that was the other thing I was going to show you. To move things um, into inboxes, you can do, you can, we already looked at this button, the move to button. But if I want to, I can also just drag stuff over. Now, if I want to select a bunch of these things, so for example, um, these all seem to be related. So if I just click and select, I can drag them over and let's say I put them in the client's label. Now that's not actually where they go. So I'm going to undo that. And I really like that undo feature. But actually, this has to do with an order shipping and this is your order shipped. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks is first off, if I want to select all these from here to here, then I can go through and check the boxes one at a time but that's a little bit slow. Or I can check the first one, then hold down my shift key and click the last one. And suddenly they're all selected. So it's click the first one, shift key, click the last one and you move a chunk. Now, if I wanted to apply a label, I could come up to my labels or I could drag it over, but I would like to show you this, create new. So let's say I know that these are all about shipping. So I don't even have to have the label set up ahead of time. I can create the label as I go. This nest label under means like a subfolder. Let's say I wanted to put shipping as a subcategory of vendor. I could do that. I don't actually want to do that. So I create. Once I click create, it should just create. Let's try that again. Sometimes the technology fails. Create new. Oh, I wonder if I... I might already have a shipping label. I'm going to put shipping with an exclamation. Create. And now we have this label called shipping. So here we are. Yeah, I already had one. So here we are. And notice I have these. Um, everything else has a color. And this one is just kind of gray and boring. If you're a color coordinating person, you can click that drop down right here and go to your color list. If, if you have one of these you like, say, I'm going to use that yellow label. But now it's it's similar to one that's next to it. So let's say I come up here again and I can add a custom color. So I can choose the background and the text color. So let's say I want this kind of red and maybe that kind of uh, yellow for the text and apply and see it, it puts it right on there right away. I come here to shipping exclamation point and there they all are. I haven't moved them out of my inbox yet. Um, but that's the other thing you can do. You can put colors and um, even customize the colors on all the labels so that when you are looking at certain things, so for example, I could also put these into vision and apply, and then I can deselect these two and then add yet another one and apply. And you see, I get several, I can have several labels all at the same time. So they do work sort of like folders, but they're much more flexible. You can have uh, more than one on an email and you know, if I were to go and look into uh, vision clients and shipping, I would find this email in all of those places. So in addition to Gmail's powerful search, I've got um, a really handy, useful tool in the labels. Um, and then when I'm ready, I can drag these two over to wherever I want them. I can come up here to move and put them wherever I want them. And since they're already labeled, another thing Gmail does that I really like is it moves whatever your labels that are on to the top. 
So if I select some more and then go back into labels, you'll notice that the check mark is there for two, but since only two of them have clients, it has like this line. So if I clicked clients, it would turn it on for all of them. If I clicked, unclicked it, it would turn it off for all of them. And there we go. And that's labels in Gmail. And I hope it is a step in helping you um, get organized. Your next step after you've got your label set up is to set up filtering. But that's another screencast.